So this is one of the big ones. Sony have been slowly building up their first party releases from the PS4 generation onto the PC platform, and now we have the biggest to date. Porting Insomniac's incredible game and engine is in the very capable hands of Nixies, the new member of Sony Studios no less. An amazing debut no doubt. So have they come out swinging? Now this game needs no introduction. The PlayStation 5 remaster improved the 2018 original significantly. New facial models improved resolution and performance, DualSense controls and graphics, which included some of the best ray tracing on consoles thus far. All of this and more comes to the PC platform. By no means an easy feat of engineering for Nixes. To get this bespoke tailored engine for the PlayStation platforms running under DirectX 12 on the PC platform, just under two years after it released at launch of the PlayStation 5 with some improvements over the PS5 nonetheless, so long as you have the high-end hardware at least. So what's on offer here for the PC then? Well, higher FPS, meaning you can exceed the 120 FPS ceiling of the PS5, again, if you have the hardware. Shadows are increased. Ray tracing is increased over the very best on the PS5 in the performance ray tracing mode, and even fidelity, level of detail, or LOD, is slightly further out in long city vistas over the performance RT mode on PS5 at least. And the AA and upscale options are plentiful here with DLAA, DLSS options, all included for Nvidia machines, bolstered further with TAA, SMAA, and Insomniac's very own temporal injection that runs on the PlayStation platforms, now also ported to PC. Finally, FSR 2.0 has also been added, but this is still being improved by the team at the time of this video. In fact, the game review process here has really given us a look behind the curtain with the team working hard to hit the quality level they are known for. A big update made drastic increases right at the 11th hour just before this video went live and in fact there's another update coming post this video going live but before the game launches. The addition of more AA options was one of those, allowing you to pick your AA and all your upscale choices separately including dynamic scaling and direct modes. It also includes ultra-wide resolutions, higher resolutions than 4K, although that is more future-proofing for PCs to come, but it's still a nice benefit of the PC platform. It even includes full DualSense support via USB only from haptics, adaptive triggers, and speaker support, alongside full mouse and keyboard and the other controllers as you so wish. It even includes all that DLC thrown into one package. From that score, it's a solid PC port with all the options you would expect, some over and above that, and Nixes are delivering more right at and beyond launch. This enables a great breadth of PCs to run the game. Even the Steam Deck can join in the web slinging action with full deck support before launch and included here in my tests. Clear, move up. Hey guys. I guess bombs are part of Willy's getaway plan. What does it take to deliver the same performance as the PlayStation 5? And then what does it take to better that? And is that even possible? So let's start with visual quality and improvements. At its heart, the core game assets, textures, effects, animations, etc. are all identical to the PlayStation 5 version. The key improvements come in fidelity or resolution levels you can achieve, namely ray traced reflections. This is a tale of two cities before the patch and after. Before the patch, the quality of the ray tracing was very poor, very low resolution, artifact popping and issues across the board in all modes, and effectively far less objects in the BVH, that bounding volume hierarchy. This meant that all the quality settings, even at the highest level, were not as good as the settings we saw on the PlayStation 5, even in that performance RT mode. But once the patch is applied and how the game will launch, then you have the same three modes of ray tracing, Medium is still lower than both models on PS5, but now it's only very slightly, with less objects included in that BVH container, and it renders them at a slightly lower resolution. This means that objects can still be missing, causing changes in reflections as walls may be missing or NPCs, but high boosts this to a similar levels to performance RT, although resolution is now higher than the PS5, so long as you render at 1440p or above though, because like many effects in the title, these scale with a chosen output resolution. Again, sometimes the objects in the BVH can be less than on PS5, and very high improves this, with both reflected objects and resolution being the highest even over the native 4K30 fidelity mode on PlayStation 5. It can improve the look of some sections and the increased objects, although it can be hard to spot and less highlighted, as you can see here, once you see them though, it can be harder to ignore them when reverted. 
All in though, this is the single biggest increase you get over PlayStation 5 in regards to effects. Shadows are noted, but in my tests from gameplay and cinematics, these are very minor increases in resolution. Although there might be other areas in nighttime city and electrical lights that add improvements, but I'll cover that more in a later patch. Other post effects and alphas can also be better, albeit very minor. Again, all down to those 4K resolutions compared to the performance RT mode, which dynamically scales between 2560 by 1440 to 2240 by 1260. Things such as shadow maps, hair fins, alpha particles, bloom effects, and texture filtering can all be better than on PS5. Resolution being the most prominent. However, you will need a powerful GPU of 3080 or 3070 or 6800 levels to achieve that. And even then, with a form of reconstructed AA in place to maintain better performance, or even at times the same. Motion blur samples can also be higher and have more coverage on limbs, characters and camera, occasionally making textures look less detailed due to the per pixel blending. Though the high fidelity models, performance captured real-time cinematics, silky smooth traversal and combat system are all as impressive here on the PC as they ever were on PS5. Nothing is lost in translation as you take your first bite of the Big Apple. <laughs> So we have five specifications of PC, Nvidia and AMD. So with Nvidia machines first, we have the top tier 3090 paired with the Zen 3700 and then paired with a 5950X to ensure we give it room to breathe. But this is where results get interesting. With review code as it went out, we can see that even cinematics cause dips below the ideal 60 FPS target. This was mostly due to GPU stalls and all the engine or API being heavily reliant on that CPU. It's CPU bound here, mostly due to a main worker thread. Looking at the reduced performance we see moving it over to a 3700, that GPU has even less room to breathe here, and therefore utilization drops. Post this patch though, it's all but fully resolved. Taking my RTX 2070 gives us a clear example. Overclocked here to more like a 2070 Super, paired with a 2700X, it really struggled to get anywhere close to 60 FPS in both cinematics and gameplay, prior to the patch being released, but once it has, many of the areas that would have formed a large part of this review are resolved. As such, the tests on the RTX 3090 are now made redundant by the updates. As it stood though, the same issues covered on those two machines still stand on the two that I can test, namely CPU and data bound, largely from a main worker thread and under utilization of the GPU at times. The improvements offered will be mirrored on these, albeit that resolutions can be that much higher with the 3090. As of version 1.806, the quality performance across all platforms has significantly improved. Taking my RTX 2070 gives us a clearer example. Prior to the patch, it could be GPU bound often, even at 1440p with DLSS DRS active. Whilst traversing the screen and swinging through the city, that BVH cost to the CPU, which is largely fixed no matter whether you set medium or high, does cause heavy stutters. Meaning no matter what resolution you set the card, it will never be a lock 60 FPS with ray tracing active. And even then, not fully possible with it turned off. Cinematics are now significantly better than before. Almost twice the performance in certain cases. Where it used to be stuttering into the 20s, it can now often hit 60 FPS or stay within the 50s most of the time, giving us a 100% performance increase alone. And that's not all. As covered above, the ray tracing quality was far lower than the PS5 and caused flickering, low resolution chunky pixels, less objects reflected, and overall worse quality, significantly in the medium settings. Imaged instability, all of that whilst halving your frame rate. Now even at medium, which is slightly lower than the PS5's in performance RT, it can only be around 15-20% to worse performance in the tested sections, but with slightly better IQ if that DLA option is used being superior to the game's TAA method, although in like-for-like -like tests, DLAA is approximately 5-10% to more expensive than TAA, which uses Insomniac's temporal injection when DRS is enabled. Meaning at worst, you could be 30-something percent slower with better IQ than the PS5, which also uses DRS, but the performance is as close to a lock 60 FPS on the console, never to be noticed, single frame drops aside. No matter what is happening, cinematic, swinging, fighting, it holds that target almost to a T, and largely because it can transfer data much better, which causes longer, occasional stutters of 100 milliseconds still on the PC. 
The RTX 2070 here can hold the same level in walled off fight zones and some cinematics, but while swinging around the city or moving the camera, even with the patch applied with city views off into the distance, it can still dip into the 40s, but before it could dip into the 30s. Disable ray tracing though, and we can see performance double on all machines. That same 1440p DRS or DLSS can help stay above the 16 millisecond frame time required for 60, with those dips seen before now removed, with less single thread limited CPU work, resulting in higher GPU utilization. They've done a very good job here in jobifying more of the work across multiple threads, thereby reducing that impact on one single thread. Therefore, what you're seeing is CPU utilization going up and therefore performance improving. It can still dip, but now these are genuine GPU bound scenarios or you're traveling at speed causing data streaming and the associated CPU bandwidth costs that the PC has over the PlayStation 5's dedicated hardware to support this. Meaning the Zen 2700 is no longer the slowest cog in this engine test, although it can still be a limiting factor in certain scenarios, but effectively the performance and the requirements here means the faster the CPU you have, the better the performance will be by and large. This means that the RX 6800 at maximum settings with SSR enabled is pretty much a locked 4K at 60 FPS whenever the CPU is not being tapped with city travel. But when it does, you will still see those same drops below that 16 millisecond frame time as it becomes CPU or data bound. As such, you can max out all the options by ray tracing to deliver a sharp and smooth way to play. And this game benefits from high resolutions as the high quality assets, textures and lighting all benefit from the extra pixels as most elements scale with the target output. The 3600X can remain a noose around the GPU though. Jobs and work are now far better allocated, meaning total CPU usage can hit the 90s, let alone on a single core. The engine is supremely multi-threaded, with it offering better image quality and performance over the 2070 and the Zen 2700. Fundamentally, it can run the game at 4K DRSS with maximum ray tracing at almost identical levels to the 2070 at 1440p high, meaning a welcome increase in IQ and frames, well, aside swinging into the action, that is. So finally, the Steam Deck here. Well, off the bat, this little handheld does a brilliant job of offering PS4-like performance and quality. Ray tracing is obviously not on the cards, as is, for the most part, 60 FPS. But with some tweaks to a medium and low level with high textures, you can gain a solid 30 FPS level with 1080p DRS enabled and enjoy the wise cracking web slinging action on the go or on the big screen. Due to the meaty CPU from a mobile perspective and capable GPU, you can cap to 30 FPS and the frame time graph shows again a smooth and consistent cadence throughout, very close to the PS4's performance. It does often scale to 720p, but the TAA injection solution does a commendable job hiding much of this from your view. As you can use the OS enabled FSR 1.0 mode and with a slightly higher cost, gain a sharper and better image. Pushing the resolution down and some other settings can see 60 FPS hits in quieter moments, but this is far from consistent or ideal and would not be my recommendation. But as is par for the course with PC, the choice is yours. It can still be mesmerizing to think we're now playing a top tier PS4 title of 2018 with improvements on the go in 2022 with less than 40 watts of power. What's that they say about responsibility and power again? Oh, I forget. The question posed here was, what PC spec do you need to equal the PS5? And from the tested sections, then an RTX 3070 or RX 6700 XT will deliver the same or slightly better results than the PS5, certainly from a graphical perspective. In regard to the CPU, then the question is harder to answer. In the smaller sections, any modern CPU of 2700 or upwards will deliver on 60 plus frame rates. It is within the traveling that the CPU and associated data throughput requirements where that demand increases which is only mitigated but not resolved with ray tracing disabled. Future patches may improve this and that indeed is the team's target. And we will certainly be swinging back in to cover this one shortly. But for now, the Spider-Man remastered port offers a close mirror of the PS5's best and in many ways it can exceed it with all the fun style and action losing nothing on this new platform. Just be aware that a fully locked 60 FPS, certainly in a big part of the game of traveling, will come at very expensive cost and right now may not be fully possible. 
Anyway, that's it for another performance review. If you like all these deep dives into game performance, technology, and graphics, then keep it IGN and IGN Performance Reviews, and we'll be swinging back very soon. I'll catch you on the next one. Ah, anyone want to surrender? No?